Hey gang, welcome to the Worksheet Solutions Walkthrough for the Worksheet, The Grinder Reaction. Okay gang, if you're new here, if you're new to these Worksheet Solutions Walkthroughs, because I feel like at this point we're really getting to what I consider the more complex part of organic chemistry, uh, you've seen the instructional video, maybe you looked at the worksheet attached with the Grignard reaction, you've, you, know, you saw the answers, but you want a deeper explanation. Well, you're in the right place. In this video, we're gonna be walking through the Grignard reaction worksheet, and I'm gonna show you how I arrived at all the answers to hopefully give you the answers that you're looking for. So let's do it. In problem one, I just wanted to kind of ease in, provide a little bit of a warm up to the worksheet. So in problem one, all we are tasked with doing is we have these alkyl halides, you know, these could have, these are alkyl bromides, but they easily could have been alkyl chlorides. And all we're doing is we're treating them with elemental magnesium, right? The little circle just means elemental. You may see that, you may not. And, you know, in the preparation of Grignard reagents, you might even see magnesium and some solvent like THF. If it's there, if it's not there, don't worry about it. You know, go with whatever your professor or your instructor is doing. However, uh, in Jochem land, right? We're just going to be doing this with mag uh, elemental magnesium. And I just wanted to see the Grignard reagent where, in its form where you have the uh, carbanion coordinating with the MGBR and then where you actually show the charges. So better shown than uh, spoken. What I was really looking for in each scenario is you see that the magnesium and the bromine, you know, buddy up and you see that this would be a Grignard reagent. But what I also wanted to see was an illustrate is that we really have a negative carbanion, a nucleophilic carbon now, and that is offset by the plus one charge from magnesium and bromine budding up together because magnesium is a plus two charge. When it loses the two valence electrons it has, bromine would have a minus one when it gains an electron. So together, plus two, minus one, overall plus one, which negates the minus one right here. So this isn't really a plus, this is more of a this is what we get, but this is the two forms you can equally represent the Grignard reagent as. Okay, so moving right along, this isopropyl bromide would turn into this Grignard reagent, but we could also express it just like this. And you know, there's no rhyme or reason how I'm spatially uh, organizing these. As long as you have the charges in the right place, that's all that matters when in these types of uh, representation of the Grignard reagent. Okay. Then down here, you know, I think, you know, I can't imagine this was uh, too much of a curveball, right? This is just easing in. I just wanted to make sure that you know that when we perform or when we, pre when we prepare Grignard reagents, we have a nucleophilic carbon. This, the two electrons right here belong to the carbon that they're attached to, okay? And last but not least, we would make this Grignard reagent right here with the isobutyl bromide electrons on that carbon and that's really all there is to you know problem one on to two okay gang in problem two we are given five reactions and four of them are going to be acid base ones but one of them isn't so uh, this section is mostly about acid base but just to keep you on your toes I threw in just a regular old SN2 because remember Grignards, even though we know they love carbonyls, it's that they're negative. They're good nucleophiles, but they're also wicked good bases. So, you know, always be on the lookout to do an acid base reaction or an SN2 reaction, whether, you know, you're attacking a carbonyl carbon or just a carbon that's good for nucleophilic attack. Okay, so in this problem up here, I hope what you're seeing is the Grignard, which is our nucleophile or good base, right? Either or. Uh, and then we have this structure over here. I hope you're seeing we have an alcohol, and remember, alcohols are amphoteric. That's why we had the whole worksheet devoted to alcohols and their properties, right? So they can be donators or acceptors of H+. Well, because we have a really strong base here, and this, you know, alcohol, not a good leaving group. There's nothing present that's going to make it a good leaving group. This is just going to be an acid-base reaction. The electrons right here are going to rip off. They're going to abstract this proton right here, and I'm going to pretend like I have the bond exposed right there show the electrons between the oxygen and the hydrogen going on the oxygen so what we get over here is this oxygen with three lone pairs and a negative charge and remember we the whole point of number one is so we could see all right we have this going on right here well after this uh, carbanion picks up H plus it's just gonna be neutral 
those electrons that gave it the negative charge are going to supply the, you know, the means to make a bond between that carbon and H+. Plus. Okay, so moving right along. Down here, okay, base and a carboxylic acid, acid-base reaction. So I hope if I skip the arrow drawing for the acid-base reaction, there's no mystery as to how we got this, right? I'll even draw after the fact. Right, these electrons belong to this carbon, and that means after the fact, we no longer have a carbon ion, we just have, I can asterisk that hydrogen, just to really show it at the end, okay? So now when we go here, we see Grignard, good base, good nucleophile, and okay, now I think we see the SN2 reaction, right? All we see here is a carbon attached to a good leaving group, right? There's no obvious you know, source of H+, there's no acid-base reaction present, so what we have going on here is this Grignard reagent doing backside attack, kicking off Cl- as a leaving group. So what we actually have, and I like to draw the substrate first, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Combined, or, you know, bonded to what is this square carbon. And off of my square carbon, I have two lines. So that is the structure. And we can double check ourselves. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Eight carbons total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Math works and is fun. Okay. Moving right along. So we found the substitution reaction. Let's just finish out the last two acid base problems. Right here, we see T butanol, methyl Grignard. Okay? So we will get T butoxide as well. And again, if you wanted to like buddy up with the spectator ion, the MGBR plus at the end, feel free, but not necessary. And we will just have methane after the fact, right? Because if I drew the bond right there. This would be the electron flow. And last but not least, down here, we just have this going on. So that's why if anyone uses the phrase, don't spoil your, like keep your Grignards dry, don't let your Grignards get wet, it's because if you have water in the mix, right? Like say your Grignards in a solution, you know, with acetone or THF, you know, polar uh, aprotic solvents, aprotic being key. If you have something protic, your Grignard is just gonna do a quick acid-base reaction and rip off a proton, and then you don't have Grignard anymore. You just have whatever organic piece your Grignard came from. So this would give us this, as well as hydroxide. Okay, gang, that was problem two. We have a lot more ahead of us, so let's keep going. All right, gang, in problem three, there's no acid base for these next four. Uh, no acid base, no conventional SN2, I'll call it. This is going to be pure attack of carbonyl. We're sticking carbon pieces together. And then in the next set of, of questions for problem three, then it's up to you to decide. So in these problems right here, I very much recommend it's, I don't even know if I'd really call it a mechanism. It's more of just a one step. I would draw the arrows. And then if you need to indicate your carbons, like how I did the dot and the square, that's fair game. Do it. Why not take every you know step to you know speed yourself up and predict products correctly and accurately. Okay, so in this problem right here, we have methyl Grignard, we see this ketone right here, right? Nucleophile, very, uh, you know, a good electrophilic carbon, ready to be attacked by something negative. I'm gonna go ahead and draw this bond right here just so I can really show the elect where the electrons are coming from. When I attack that carbon right there, electrons will kick up. So what I'll do at first, like I said, I always like to I'm going to draw this O minus at first. Don't worry, I know why we have acidic workup. I like to draw that and then I like to you know show, oh my goodness, I just made a giant mistake. Don't do that. Right here, there we go. I like to show that the carbon I was attacked was the dot carbon. I'm coming in hot with this one carbon, this one carbon is right, just the asterisk carbon. So I will show that right here. I don't have to draw that CH3, I'm choosing to do that. Um, so I've now connected my carbon pieces, and we know there was work up, so this O minus would pick up an H plus to then become neutral product number one. Down here, electrons right belong to this carbon. I'm going to go over here and attack this electrophilic aldehyde, right, the carbonyl carbon inside of it. And then electrons will kick up. So what I like to do is draw my, uh, you know, I'm just gonna draw my substrate. 
I'll show that O minus. It's off of this carbon that I'm now dotting. I now have this asterisk carbon right here. So when I draw this line, that's the asterisk carbon. I have two methyl groups off of it. Methyl group, methyl group. And before I forget, right, acidic workup. So that O minus isn't actually there. We have an OH, we have an alcohol. Okay, moving right along. Same deal. Granier, we have ethyl granier, then we have cyclohexanone. We will attack. That's supposed to be at the carbon. Egypt, what are you doing? Electrons jump on up to the carbonyl oxygen. I'll go ahead and once again draw my O minus. I'm going to slant it off to the left to make room over here because I have an asterisk carbon that is then attached to another. You know, it's two carbons. And lest I forget, make sure I show that there was acidic workup. Last but not least, for this uh, first set of problem three, we have propyl granuloid coming in to attack formaldehyde. So this is can be sometimes weird. You have a one carbon carbonyl, right? It's formaldehyde. So what in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw the more substantial piece, which is my granuloid, and I'm going to asterisk this carbon. Once I draw that line right there, I just have to make sure I show off of the asterisk carbon, I have an alcohol. So don't get confused. Find whatever system works best for you. I kind of like making sure I just nail that connection point and then I make sure I play who is attached to whom. That's right, I said whom. And now we're going to do the second half of problem three. Okay gang, to round out problem three, we have this lovely array of problems and we have no idea if they're just regular resin two attacking a carbonyl or an acid-base reaction. So let's get started. So in this first problem up here, uh, the process would just be make sure it's not an acid-base reaction and then see where you're going to attack. That's what I like to usually do. So up here, I see, okay, I have my Grignard, could be a nucleophile, could be acting as a, a nucleophile or a base, but I see I have a good leaving group on a primary carbon. We have SN2 going on here. It's just going to be a simple attack like that, booting off of chlorine, a good leaving group. So just make sure you attach everyone where they need it to be. There's my dot carbon. If I draw one more line, I'm on to my asterisk carbon. And that is, there's one more carbon off of that carbon. So we play who is attached to whom. Don't know if it's grammatically correct, but we're rolling with it. All right. So in the second problem, I hope you're seeing base acid, right? Carboxylic acid. So, and if you're wondering why there's no attack on this carbonyl carbon, acid base reactions always went out and carboxylic acids are no chem two things. So if you're sticking around for a second semester, you will see, and we will talk about that in more depth. However, right, all that's gonna happen here is just a snatching up of that H plus, dumping the electrons onto oxygen right there. So we get just the, you know, if people say salts, you know, get the salts in this in this solution. We get the uh, neutral uh, propane. And if I wanted to buddy this up, I could do this right there. Okay, not necessary, but you could do it. All right. So now down here, now we see our bread and butter. We see a Grignard attacking a ketone on our friend Al uh, acetone, and. If I go ahead and mark this as a dot carbon, I mark this as my asterisk carbon, I can go ahead and show O. Well, I could just do OH because we know it's going to get propanated up. Oh, I forgot this. My apologies. Right, We do have acidic workup. We're going to propanate that up. And what's going to look kind of weird, and I have this drawn a little bit differently in the worksheet, but it doesn't matter. Everyone's attached to where they need it to be. Just make sure directly off of your dot carbon is the asterisk carbon, but that's a part of the ring. So it is gonna look weird and clunky, but that is okay. All right, moving along, we see Grignard and we see methyl, uh, you know, we have a methyl iodide. Great, great substrate for SN2. All we're doing here is an attack on that carbon, a booting off of the iodine to, you know, I minus, and we're just really lengthening this carbon chain by one. If I want to do it this way, that's all there is to it. All right, and last but not least, we did talk about this in the video, but I, I this was a problem that just always stuck with me because uh, 
I, I feel like it really hammers home that you understand what's going on. We have this structure right here and we have methyl grignard. What's going to happen? Are we going to attack this ketone or are we going to spoil our grignard, quote unquote, and do an acid-base reaction? And I hope you are shaking your keyboard, your monitor, screaming, Joe, we're spoiling the grignard because you're absolutely right, we are. The acid-base reaction is so fast and so exothermic, that's the first thing that's going to happen. It's going to use up all your grignard and that ketone is going to remain unharmed. So we have a ketone up top. All we have is a carboxylate down low, and we just have methane. All right, gang, we have one more problem. Problem four, let's finish strong. Hey, gang, in problem four, we're just drawing the mechanism for the screening reaction. So really, not a crazy ending. I think you'll see it as a nice cool down. Okay, so if we take a look here, we really have two steps. We have the attack and then we have the acidic workup, right? The protonating of the O- minus up to an alcohol OH. So if I just redraw my substrate and nucleophile down here, right? What we're doing is I'm going to dot my carbonyl. I don't have to do this first, but I'm going to because why not? All I'm going to do is show the attack up from my granyard super negative, very nucleophilic, to the carbonyl carbon, super electrophilic, right? Very strong partial positive charge being double bonded to an oxygen. Electrons get kicked up onto the very electronegative oxygen. He, you know, that atom is super cool with that. So in that attack, right, let me just have, to, uh, the greatest challenge is just redrawing what you just did and not losing any carbons. The nice part is, is that in a problem like this, we are given what it should look like. So we pretty much know we stitched it all together. Uh, so if I dot that carbon, I draw one more line, I know I've then drawn to the asterisk carbon, which has two carbons off of it. And then last but not least, I just need to show, and you know what I'm gonna also do? I use H3O plus, very generic uh, you know, acid but often. That is just to take the place of a you know, non-nucleophilic acid, right? So a, a non-nucleophilic acid is H2SO4. A nucleophilic acid would be something like HBr because when you use HBr, you get H plus and Br minus. And we know Br minus is a good nucleophile. We don't want that to happen right here. So H2SO4 is a good example of, you know, what you could use for granular acidic workup or, you know, just like when you're, you know, yeah, exactly. Talking too much, Joe. All right, so I could show H2SO4 doing its thing, just giving O minus and H plus to protonate it up to the product we see above, which is this alcohol right here. Okay, gang, that does it for this worksheet. I imagine after this, you'll be heading to synthesis land, so I hope to see you there. But if you're watching this video, that means you supported the website. You've you know, thrown Joe Kem some money, and I am so appreciative of helping uh, of you helping me cover my costs, and also just using Joachim as a resource in general. I'm so happy that you're using it right now. I hope you're using it towards the end of Ochem and through your organic career. And I hope to see you all in the next video.